Meteorologist Zach Fidella here with you on this Tuesday evening, recording this about 6 o'clock in the evening. And boy, do we have a very active tropical Atlantic. We have three systems out there. Of course, you've heard of Hurricane Irma, a Category 5 storm. We have Jose, which is behind Irma. And then we have newly developed TD13, which is expected to become Katia over the coming days. But look, it's the first week of September. The peak of hurricane season is September 10th. This is what's supposed to happen. This is not out of the ordinary. This is normal for this time of year. We're going to have multiple storms. And I'm pleased to announce, if you're watching me in Texas or Louisiana, none of these storms, I feel like, will impact us really in any kind of way, which is certainly good news. But I want to draw your attention to a couple of things this evening just to kind of keep you aware of the situation. First things first, I've heard way too many comparisons between Irma's track and Katrina. Please don't do that. They were two totally different storms. And we're talking about 12 years of science have separated the two. What I mean about that? Our computer models have come a long way since then. That was the largest track change I think I've ever seen with a hurricane. What would happen with Katrina? Can it happen again? Of course. Anything can happen. We're talking about weather. We're talking about predicting the future. And that could be very difficult at times. But we have a lot of science behind us. We have a lot of science in 12 years that we've kind of jumped ahead of times. And our computer models are much better in today's world. Let me show you a look at the satellite right now because I'm going to highlight the three areas that, of course, you can see clearly where Irma is. This thing is a perfect symmetrical circle. And when that happens, you know it's going to be a very intense storm. Behind Irma, which is just north of me on the video, that is Jose. And then finally, we have TD13 in the far southwestern Gulf. And like I said, if you're a resident of Texas or Louisiana, I feel confident right now in saying I do not see any impact from any of these storms, at least in the next week. Jose could do some crazy things, but again, that's weeks away, and chances are Jose's just going to head on out to sea, and that's certainly good news, but it might take a little time with that storm. We're not going to focus on Jose. We're going to focus on Irma, because Irma's the one that's going to impact the United States most likely, and could impact the United States in a very serious way. I want you to if you have any family and friends in Florida, make sure, they should already be aware, but make sure they are aware of this. Make sure that they know, hey, if you need to evacuate, don't hesitate, do so. If your officials tell you to evacuate, you do so. This is not the kind of storm that you want to make decisions with because it could be a life or death decision in many regards. Now, we still have a lot of time between now and the time this makes it to Florida, if it ever does, but right now, all signs point to a very serious impact coming for our friends in Florida from Irma. Look at this thing this evening. Like I said, clear symmetry. When these things are perfect circles like this, that means they're very intense. And this storm is very intense. It's not the strongest storm ever in the Atlantic Basin, but it's right up there with them. It's, it's in the top five at this point. And clearly it's showing no signs of weakening. And notice it continues to gain a little latitude. And they, you know, if you're a small island like that, you know how rare it is to get, you know, one of these storms to come right over your island. But it looks like the far northeastern Caribbean, that is unfortunately looks to be a dead on strike for those islands. And notice Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico's back here. It's kind of hiding off the screen. But this storm needs to gain some latitude just so it misses Puerto Rico to the north. And that's going to be the big thing we watch over the next few days or really the next day. It needs to gain latitude to miss those big islands. Now, it's a good thing if it hits them in regards to the United States, because that means it's going to knock the intensity down. But if you hit a, an island like Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic of Haiti, the loss of life could be astronomical. So that's not something we certainly want to see. Here's the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. Again, amazing. 185 miles per hour sustained winds. That's just absolutely... Not many structures on this earth can withstand that type of wind and stay standing. That's how intense this storm is at this point. And thankfully, hopefully, it's making that intense deepening now. And it might slowly weaken as it gets closer to the Bahamas and Florida later on into the weekend. But the water is all along here, very warm. If it avoids land, it's going to go into fluctuations. It's going to weaken a little bit, and then it might strengthen back again. So don't think that this thing can just sustain the Category 5 intensity all the way to Florida. It's probably not going to happen. But what we don't want to happen is it for it to weaken moving into the Bahamas and then strengthen when it gets into the Florida Straits. Again, the water is very warm. Nothing leads me to believe that it will weaken enough that we won't have cause for concern that this will be a very intense impact for Florida. And I keep saying intense impact for Florida. How do we know that's going to happen? Look, it's still four or five days out. 
We don't know for sure that that's going to happen, but we're starting to get that consensus among the models that it's either going to go from here to about here. Ignore bad models. I've said it a million times. I hate spaghetti plots because there are bad models on these spaghetti plots, and it makes you think, hey, maybe it might go somewhere else when it has no shot at doing that, okay? I want to say I'm going to draw the GFS on here. The latest GFS does something like this. If it misses Florida to the east, that would be great news. Do I believe the GFS? Not really. The GFS has not been doing good all year long. I saw a plot today that shows the best performing model so far really this year. And with this storm, Irma, has been the European. So that's what I'm going to show you tonight. I'm going to show you the European and then kind of put it out there of how this is all going to play out. I showed this last night. I'm going to do it again tonight. As we go throughout the day tomorrow, this is... Tuesday, this is Wednesday into Thursday. Look at that trough. That is a huge trough. That's going to bring some very nice weather to the Gulf Coast. That's going to bring some cool air. It's going to bring some dry air. It's going to start to feel amazing late Wednesday and especially through the end of the week, Thursday and Friday. But that trough is not, that front, that first front this week is not what picks up Irma. I think everybody keeps getting things confused here. You see the storm. You see the trough now going into Thursday and Friday. That trough is leaving us. It is lifting out. The front has moved through, and notice this big ridge of high pressure building in. It can't go into that. High pressure blocks hurricanes. They go around high pressure areas, and that's what's going to continue to happen. So let's put this in motion as we get into this weekend, Friday into Saturday. High pressure is not as intense. You see the reds have gone away. The trough is gone now, though. It's basically all the way in the northeastern United States, so it's, it's dissipated. But there's a couple of things I want to draw your point draw your attention to. You see this high building over in Texas? Can't go here. There's a block there, okay? There's the trough up north, but it's past the storm. High pressure over here, okay? That's going to block it from going this way. There's a weakness in the middle. And yeah, Louisiana is covered in that weakness. But watch what happens, and this is what all the models are pointing to. As I put this into motion, that weakness becomes almost smaller as we get later into the weekend Watch what happens. The storm is almost on the coast of Cuba. You see where the storm is here. The European is one of the farthest west models, which I do believe the European, okay? Because the European, unfortunately, it, it's the best. It, it handled the whole Harvey situation where the stall come back offshore, go to Louisiana. It was the first to do that. All the models started doing other crazy things. And guess what happened? It did exactly what the European said. Now, the European lost it a little bit with time, but... I'm going to be more, until I see the European change, I'm thinking that the storm might get very close to the coast of Cuba, which could be great news because then that could weaken it a little bit before it makes that turn. But then watch as I put this into motion with the European. On the next run, this is going Sunday afternoon. Watch it make the jump. It makes the jump north. It almost moves due north because what happens is, is we get this little upper low that drops down. I've said it. Here's the original front. That's the one that's going to give us the cool air at the end of this week. That's long gone. That's, that's not what's taking Irma and taking it north. It's this little upper low that's going to drop south on the back side of this area of high pressure over the four corners. That is what's then going to just pull this due north, and that's what the models keep saying. They're not budging from it. Yeah, they're, they're altering a little bit from east coast of Florida to the west coast of Florida, right on the Gulf of Mexico, Florida line. But that's about it. They're not coming farther into the Gulf. And with that upper low sitting right here, it can't come into it. It's going to go north in front of it. And that's why I'm confident in saying that I don't believe this is going to be a storm for the northern Gulf Coast, at least for the northwestern Gulf Coast. Louisiana and Texas, I still feel confident tonight. I know everybody wants to hear that. They want confidence. You know, I can't tell you I'm giving you an accurate forecast until it all plays out. I could tell you I'm giving you a confident forecast. And I do feel confident that none of the models put this in the central or western Gulf. And that they keep pushing that the upper level low drops down on the back side of that high pressure area. They keep developing it and they keep turning the storm north in Florida. Yes, the threat to Florida is significant. I can't reiterate that enough. I know a lot of people probably have family and friends in Florida, maybe some travel plans. Now's the time to put everything together. You have had all your hurricane preparations all throughout the year and call your friends and family. Tell them, hey, you're watching the storm, right? You know, if you need anything, let me know. I can make, I'll try to make it as easy as possible on you because if the emergency officials tell them to evacuate, you want them to tell, you want them to take them seriously. This is not a storm that's going to be 
a weakening storm that's going to turn into a Category 1. This is going to be an intense hurricane that could cause some significant problems for Florida, especially if it runs straight up the peninsula. Say it makes landfall between in the Keys and moves right into Miami and then goes right up through Orlando. That's the worst-case scenario, but right now it looks like the models are saying that's what's going to happen. And when if that does happen, there's going to be some significant problems for the state of Florida. But thankfully for us, I still do not recall, I don't see any reason to believe that this storm can get as far west as New Orleans westward. I don't see it coming to Louisiana or Texas. We still have to watch. We wait. We continue to monitor. But for the most part, right now, I feel confident in telling you at home that I don't see this being a major problem for us. None of the storms out there I don't see being big issues for us right now. We still have a few weeks left. Hurricane season is not done. Uh, we still have about a month left that we're going to have to monitor this closely because this year has been very, very intense. Um, but that's something we'll worry about down the road. Let's get our out of the picture. We'll continue to monitor it. But right now, like I said, feel good that we shouldn't have to deal with any major impacts. I'm meteorologist Zach Fredello on this Tuesday night. Hope everybody has a great night and a great rest of your week.